Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Something smells fishy. I mean, literally. Today on our space, if you're going to sneak around someone's home, best make sure you don't leave behind the smelliest of evidence. Just saying. Canned tuna made me realize my wife was cheating. I gave her the boot and made sure her affair partner lost his job. I've been married for about 20 years now. My wife and I are in our late mid 40s, and we both got married relatively early, at least compared to people around us. I'll tell you that her name is Maria because I think what happened is specific enough that she'll certainly know it's her, but no one else will. I don't care too much if she stumbles across this post, but I know that's virtually impossible since she barely understands what Reddit is. Plus, it can be hard to consistently use a fake name without slipping up at some point. Our marriage has been fine. It hasn't been sunshine and rainbows, but neither has it been doom and gloom. They all have ups and downs after all, and I think the major cause of issues between us has been finances, since I earn a lot more than her now, but those arguments and fights aren't too common. Income-wise, we were pretty much level when we started off, but her career isn't the kind with the potential for much growth, and she took time off to take care of our two children well, I held down the fort on the financial side of things. Now, there's a pretty huge gap between us when it comes to money. I work every day except for Sunday, so I'm not at home all the time, but I have to support my family. I do have extra days off every so often, and I always make sure to use those as well as I can towards spending time with the kids. Naturally, being out of the house so often means that I can't keep tabs on every single thing that happens when I'm not at home, but I've tried to operate on trust and detecting suspicious behavior. There's been nothing out of place from what I can actually see. So why worry myself needlessly? Well, I finally saw something that raised my suspicions some days ago. As stupid as it sounds, I took a break from work to get something that I forgot at home, and I found an open can of tuna on the kitchen counter. What you need to know is that my wife hates tuna. She always has, and my children weren't at home since they were staying at an uncle's place for their summer vacation. There were some other things too, which made it clear that someone was putting together a sandwich. Again though, my wife hates and I'm emphasizing hates tuna. There was no one else in the house that could have been eating it because it certainly wasn't me. My first suspicion was she was cheating. I don't know why that was the first place my head went, but it was. She should have been home at the time, but I looked throughout the whole house and I couldn't find her. It seemed like she had to rush out or something, but I couldn't imagine what might have led to that. I considered calling her right away, but I decided that it was better that she not know that I even came back home. That would help me figure out what was going on a lot better. After all, it could simply be that a friend came over and needed something to eat. But if it wasn't, my reasoning was that I would rather not give her a chance to clean up her tracks. So I headed back to work and tried to focus on what I was supposed to be doing, though unsurprisingly, I was a bit preoccupied by thoughts of her potentially being a cheater. When I got back home that evening, she was back around. So I asked her how her day was and whether anything notable happened, but she replied saying that it was the usual boring day at home. She only said that she went shopping for a few groceries in the morning and spent the rest of the day at home. Of course, that didn't align with what I saw when I came back home in the afternoon. She clearly wasn't at home, and to make sure she wasn't just misremembering, she claimed that she got back home before noon, so she was clearly lying, and there was certainly no explanation for the tuna. Again, we have been married for two decades, so I know for a fact that this wasn't about her deciding to give tuna another try. When I say she hates it, she really can't tolerate it at all. At this point, it was very clear that someone was in the house that she either deemed insignificant enough not to mention or she had someone in the house that she considered too scandalous to mention. Whoever it was clearly had a hankering for a tuna sandwich or something similar, and either they made it themselves or she made it for them. That part didn't matter, but I needed to figure out who had come around and why she felt the need to hide that person's presence in her house from me. Honestly, I wanted to be more direct, like ask, did anyone come around? But I didn't want her to have the slightest suspicion. Since at that point, I knew I was going to have to do more digging, and I knew I was going to go through her phone at the very first chance that I got. That chance conveniently came around when she was sleeping, and I wasn't patient enough to wait for a time when I'd have less of a risk of being caught. If she woke up and saw me looking through her phone, I'd confront her right away. It wasn't such a dilemma for me, so I grabbed her phone off her nightstand, and I started to go through her messages. I didn't see anything of note there, and I scrolled as far down as I could. I assumed that there would have been a message from someone that very day, or the previous one, or at least a phone call because the person must have communicated that they were around in some kind of way. That led me to go through her call logs, and that's when I saw a call earlier that day from a number that wasn't saved. I took a picture of it, because that was the only unsaved contact, and when I expanded that particular entry in the call log, I could see that her call with the person lasted over two minutes, so it wasn't a wrong number, 
or a scam call or someone trying to sell something. After that, I went to True Caller. If you know the app, enter the number and it popped up as Dr. Rosen. I knew that name. It was her doctor, but I did find it odd that the number wasn't saved for whatever reason. After all, I know that she speaks to him here and there. For some reason, I decided to check her Facebook Messenger too because I had nothing conclusive and I needed closure. All I had at that point were more questions. Fortunately for me, right at the top, I saw Andrew Rosen as the last person that she had chatted with. That was when all the alarms in my head started to blare, especially as the preview of the last message sent said, love you too. I could feel my head spinning at that point and part of me wanted to save myself from the trouble that would ensue from opening the conversation, but I still did. Earlier that day, he asked if he could come around. She told him he could, that I had left for work already. He replied with a heart emoji and a smile emoji. Then several minutes later, his next message was just around the corner. After that, there was nothing until two hours later when he said, sorry I had to leave so abruptly, the cons of being a doctor. She told him she missed him and they'd find a place to meet up during the weekend. At that point, I somehow still had the presence of mind to grab my phone, record her screen, and slowly scroll through the chat logs. I needed to make sure I had evidence of everything before it could potentially be deleted if I confronted her. It all started to make sense too. My wife was clearly cheating on me with her doctor. He had come around for them to sleep together, and at some point, while trying to make a sandwich or something, he had to rush back to the hospital. Maybe she had walked him to his car in the parking lot. Maybe she had followed him to the hospital. Or maybe only then did she go to buy groceries since I couldn't recall seeing any shopping bags or anything by the time I came back, and she should have been back from shopping at that point. I knew I couldn't get all the answers until I confronted her, but I had the answer that I wanted most. Here's the weird thing. I was feeling a very complex pair of emotions in that moment. I had spent 20 years with this woman and it only took me that long to find out she was a cheater. Maybe this was her first time. Maybe she was on her 10th affair partner. I couldn't know. It didn't matter though. I felt the urge to hurt her intensely. I wanted to throw things at her, hit her. I wanted her to feel pain. There was just too much rage bottled up in me and I was looking at her as she was sleeping, trying to stop myself from doing something that I would certainly regret. But at the same time, I felt pure relief. I had already lost 20 years to a woman that I, I just found out I shouldn't have trusted, but I could have potentially 40 more years without her, and that is a blessing. I'm at the middle of my life, so there's still a lot more ahead of me. This was my chance to be free of her and her dishonesty, and for that much, I was grateful. I had to use the power of alcohol to calm myself down and I fell asleep in the living room, which I think was for the best. I couldn't bear to sleep beside her, especially not in a bed that her affair partner and her had been in. However, before I finally lost myself in the haze, I made sure to search up private investigators. She was planning to meet up with Dr. Rosen during the weekend, and I needed to make sure I had the actual meeting documented, as well as whatever lies she was going to tell me to cover up where she was. I waited until the next day when I was at work to contact a PI. I told him a vague version of my situation and we arranged a meeting afterward. I went to his office during my lunch break and right there, I was very confident with what he convinced me he'd do. He said he'd figure out where she was going and he'd get photographic evidence for me. I paid him an initial fee, gave him all the information that he requested for, and I was out of there. After that, I did my best to remain normal on the surface so that Maria wouldn't suspect that anything was going on. She didn't seem to, which was good for me. And finally the weekend came. The day before, she told me that one of her college friends from out of town was around and she wanted to go spend the day with her. I acted zoned out while on the phone, opened the recorder app, and then apologized and asked her if she could repeat herself. She seemed miffed, but did so. I asked her the friend's name and she said Ashley. After that, I told her to have a great day and off she went. Minutes later, the PI messaged me to tell me that he was on her tail and I should sit back while he does his job. I didn't hear from him until much later that night, but before that point, I sent a message to my wife asking her how her day with Ashley was going. It took her about two hours to message and she said it was going good. That was more evidence for me. When the PI eventually messaged me, he told me that she was on her way back home and he got several photos of her and another man. He said he'd get the digital copies to me whenever I wanted, but he would also print them. I told him I'd get everything from him at the start of the next week. But from the moment that Maria walked back into the house, I honestly didn't see her as the person I knew anymore. Maybe I was just figuring out who she really was though. I was glad for the clarity though. When Monday came around, I went to the PI's place and got the images from him. There, I clearly saw her and Dr. Rosen near the entrance of a hotel, hand in hand, walking in. The PI must have had another camera with him because he also had a video of the same sequence of photos. He was thorough. The pictures also had the timestamps on them. And not only could I see when they went in earlier in the day, I also was able to see the timestamps when they walked out, stopped in front of my wife's car, 
and kissed passionately. It was dark by this point, so the photos were a lot better than the video at this point. In total, she spent seven hours with him in the hotel. I was disgusted. Now, this is where this ends for now. It's super obvious that I'm kicking her butt to the curb, but I want to make sure I hit her everywhere that I can hurt. We have children and she's busy doing this. At this point, I'm not even sure if they're mine and the thought of that hurts even more than her cheating on me. There's a lot I'm going to have to do and I would love some advice on putting my plan together. Everyone involved needs to hurt. I know Dr. Rosen. I've shaken this man's hand before. I need the best you all can provide me in terms of ideas. I'm patient. Huh, a can of tuna, who knew? Seriously though, discovering an open can of tuna when your wife hates this stuff is like finding a red flag waving right in your face. And the PI move? Smooth. Forget who done it. This is who's the doctor doing? Dr. Rosen, with his unlisted number and convenient emergencies, sounds like he's moonlighting as more than just a family physician. As for revenge, start with redecorating the house. Turn her walk-in closet into a shrine for all the tuna cans she ever despised. Send Dr. Rosen a thank you note for his unintended role in liberating you from a marriage with more secrets than a spy novel. And for the kids' sake, make sure they know the family motto, trust but verify with surveillance footage. And speaking of kids, should we be concerned if these kids are, in fact, yours and not Dr. Doolittle's? Update 1. Thank you for absolutely everyone who contributed to my last post. I know it's been quite some time, but a quick refresher is that I came to talk about finding out that my wife was cheating on me with her doctor. And I found this out because I found an open can of tuna, despite the fact she absolutely hates it. What a weird way to find out someone is cheating on you. But it seems I'm going to have to buy stock in Sunkist at this point for saving me from a cheating slut. I'm very happy with how things have turned out for me. Now, I managed to get a divorce lawyer pretty quickly. But I didn't start anything too quickly. The first concern of mine was to make sure that my children were my own. As soon as they got back from their little vacation at their uncle's place, I took them straight to a lab where I got a paternity test done. Spoiler alert. Both of them are very thankfully mine, which felt like a massive weight was lifted straight off my chest. I can't express how relieved I was of that. Once I had that confirmed, I went to the divorce lawyer and submitted all the evidence that I had managed to gather. In his opinion, the infidelity was very easy to prove, and it was also very easy to see that she planned in advance to be able to cheat with reckless abandon. She covered up her lies as well as she could, but I was fortunate enough to be able to get the hint that I got. The lawyer was also very amused at the role that Tuna played in the whole thing. The first thing that I needed to do was to serve her with papers, and I wanted to do it in a way that would hurt her and humiliate her. Looking back, I could barely recognize myself, but I chose to do it at her family's Thanksgiving dinner. Some people love family drama during Thanksgiving, so I decided to give the people a show. We were all sitting at the table when someone knocked at the door to her family's house. I volunteered to open it all day long because I knew who I was expecting. Finally, I opened the door, saw an unfamiliar face, and he asked if Maria was around. I welcomed him in, and when he walked towards the table, he asked for Maria. She indicated herself, and he handed her an envelope with the classic, you've been served, before curtly walking out. The whole place went silent, and yet I decided to stay behind and bask in what I had just done. She opened the envelope, looked at the papers in it, and just stared at me. She clearly couldn't understand what was going on since she had no idea I knew what I knew. I had no reaction on my face, and I continued to eat the food on the plate in front of me. I think just from the look she gave me, Everyone could tell she'd been served with divorce papers. She managed to croak out a why right there in front of everyone. And they seemed to be waiting for my answer. So I laid it all out. I didn't hold back any details besides what had activated my suspicions since I wanted her to simply realize she could not hide things from me. Not that she was just sloppy at covering her tracks. She didn't say anything in response. She couldn't even defend herself. And I think there was the point that everyone knew I was telling the truth. It was her family and a few in-laws of theirs, including myself, but everyone was speechless. I asked someone to cut me a piece of turkey, but no one said anything or did anything. I had savored enough of the chaos and the whole thing was getting awkward at that point, so I said a thank you for the meal and got up to go. But before I was out the door, I told her not to come home, that she didn't have a place there anymore. I was able to catch her start crying before I left. And don't worry, this all happened late into the dinner, so the kids had already left to play video games. I do acknowledge that I was a bit reckless here because I had no idea whether the kids might have been around at the time the papers were to be served, but I likely would have asked them to go upstairs if they had been. I called the kids down and we went home. I told them their mom was going to stay over to help them clean up. The oldest one is 10, so they didn't ask too many questions. The next thing that I did, with the help of the PI, was to get Dr. Rosen reported. This man slept with my wife, who happened to be a patient of his, and I didn't need a professional to tell me that was unethical. 
the medical board eventually agreed, and so did his hospital. He lost his job there, and his license was suspended for five years, which tickled me quite pleasantly. After that, it was time for me to approach the divorce. I knew that things were going to get messy, but I went in hoping that I'd get as much as I possibly could in my favor. As they tend to, the divorce process went on for quite some time, but at the very end of the day, I think I got as good a hand as I could be dealt. I made sure to present absolutely all evidence that I had regarding the situation and her infidelity, and I think a really good case was made in my favor. She didn't even deny her infidelity in court, though her lawyer tried to take the absent husband approach to make it seem like she didn't have much of a choice to try and feel loved. I felt that was stupid, and it didn't seem to work for her. In the end, I got to keep the house, my car, and I have custody of my children most of the time, a roughly 70-30 custody agreement. Fortunately, since I have the burden of custody most of the time, the judge was lenient, and I don't need to pay child support as my wife's earnings are sufficient to take care of them while they're in her custody. However, the pretty big gap in how much we earn means that I do have to pay alimony, but for what I consider to be a relatively short term. This was a lot better than what I had hoped for. I work a lot, and I know women get favored when it comes to custody, so I felt like I could have gotten the short end of the stick and ended up paying both child support and alimony. Fortunately, I only got one of those, and for far from a long time. Plus, the house is still in my hands, and rightfully so. Honestly, I hate how 20 years had to go down the drain, but it brought me my two beautiful children and a life lesson, so I can't hate on it too much. I had the luck to find out that my wife was cheating on me, but I trusted my gut when I saw something out of place. The only moral I can serve to gentlemen reading this is to always keep an eye out for out of place things and never be afraid to be suspicious. Who knew a can of tuna could become the star witness in your divorce proceedings? Sunkist must be thanking you for the unexpected product placement. Forget stocks. You should get a sponsorship deal from them. Serve divorce papers right at the table? That's next level. Thanksgiving entertainment. You had the whole family on the edge of their seats, except for the turkey, which was probably wondering why it got caught in the crossfire. And reporting Dr. Rosen? Classic revenge move. It's like taking down a character straight out of a medical drama. Who needs Grey's Anatomy when you've got your own real life drama unfolding? That's an episode I'd tune in for. But hey, at least you came out of the divorce with custody, the house, and a short term alimony deal. Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.